I admit, last season was my favorite year of CUNA Kings football. Where do I even start? It's not like we had a Potato King put up the best season in college football history. Oh wait, we did. Vilma broke 40-year-old records and won a Heisman in the process. He will be missed. Along the way, we achieved 12 wins and saw our first college football playoff action. Old McDonald's faith in the program is paying off, and the potatoes aren't the only things golden in CUNA, Idaho anymore. This football program is well on their way. It will be a change of scenery for this team as we embark on a new chapter in the Big 12. Leading us forward, Siante gets the starting nod, but young potatoes begin to sprout early. I definitely will need a look at Flood and Ben Gallimore this season. Heck, Flood has 95 speed, 95 throw power, and platinum magician. Six-star Le'Veon Eagles waits in the wings, and the rest of this team looks absolutely stacked. I would say the weakest part is actually the receiving core. Really hard to replace that Heisman production we had. 11th in the nation, this is our most favorable start, but also toughest test with with many challenging foes along the way. We benefit from such a large prestige boost that even the number one recruit in the nation is considering us. Without a doubt, Old McDonald's got a good reign on this farm. He's just looking to add to it. At this point, he's just looking to expand his acreage for more recruits. Feels like our recruiting hours doubled overnight. Kudos to that good product over there in CUNA, Idaho. The crop is so good, I know guys like Ramon Tam just want to taste. Maybe even five-star Jem Suggs, six foot seven out of Texas. They got a big agricultural presence, but they don't know what it's like up here in Idaho. They got a big agricultural presence, but they don't know how good it is until they come to Idaho. I believe this is a CUNA King first, Danny Berger, second team, All-American. First year in the Big 12, definitely happy to see some of our guys get the nod from Leon Osling, Matt Fogg, Kerry Forrester, Danny Berger, of course, and then Trayvon Beard. So many four-star gyms choosing our school as their preference. Orlando Liggins, Trent Costello, Tavares Condren. Heck, I gotta show you guys Lee Alawali. Six foot three power back, the best part 94 speed Britain butt and man the list just goes on with talented guys lining up we'll check back in on recruiting as the season progresses but for now let's turn our attention to the Duke Blue Devils a familiar foe I want to say our all-time series is split between these guys but that's the past this is the present in week one old McDonald's prepped his crew to make a statement we belong in the big 12 and here's why Siante already has his team driving right down this field and in the rain with less options than last season that's not good gonna matter for us. Don't tell him, no Vilma, no problem. We love that guy and everything he's done for this program, but Siante feels like he can do it all by himself. Or I should say, with a young cast of characters around him too. Did anyone peep that Big 12 patch on the jersey? Looks pretty good if you ask me. Now let's go ahead and take a shot under throne. I feel like the rain definitely had a part to play in that because our receiver had him beat. Exactly why we need to be mindful of weather and run the ball more often. Defense looking to make a stop here as Duke just goes right back to the ground and pound all the way in. Huge touchdown. All tied up. I think Hero could have got a step if we just had more time. Duke on the move here. All tied up seven a piece. They're going to take their time and get drilled fourth down. Opting to go for it here on fourth down. I guess no problem at all for them. So they think whiffing right through it and breaking another tackle. Under a minute to go down the field and score here. Kiero with the opening handoff that's a good run but flag on the play of course holding freshman jimmy waitman was the culprit and i'll need to cut the young offensive lineman just a little bit of slack it's his first game siante has not been living up to expectations here in the first one and he's not getting much help from his receiver friends either fourth down desperately wanting a touchdown we have him slipping through under thrown to the max intercepted Kiro was wide open in the end zone. I guess the rain is making a serious difference interfering with our offense. I got an itchy finger and I'm ready to pull Siante out of here. One more chance. Let's start with the reverse. There we go. Smythe got some space and a first. Looking for some of the cast here to step up, make some plays. It's Smythe again. Maybe he's the guy we need to see first and one. It'll be a campaign for heroes to step up as no one true anchor exists on the offense. This fourth and goal is absolutely crucial. Just going to jet touch it to our receiver. See if he can cut on in. There's Lockett, the freshman receiver. First career collegiate touchdown add that one on the board down by six here is the punt return we're gonna have a chance to run this thing back and that's right Siante is still out here he is the man at the helm 
delivering the ball. Not a good game from him, I'm not gonna lie. So I expect to see more quarterbacks get their chance. They gotta stay warm and ready on standby as we progress. But for now, let's see Hunter Cook. I thought he had him. Rain is just coming down, it's fourth. Hoping someone can spring free out here. I think we got a man if this ball can fit into his lap. Oliveira, touchdown and the lead with a minute 30. Okay, 17. And wow, what an impressive turn of events here. I thought it was over for sure as Lockett just sealed it out with that big run. Couple plays away from ending this thing, first and 19, getting their last timeouts out the system here. And with that, we got one final kneel down, sending our team home with a dub. Cuna, Idaho, get ready for a turbulent season. It's gonna be a fun one nonetheless. Siante pulled it off with a poor completion rate. At the end of the day, a win's a win. Squeaking out a narrow win against Duke, we got the FCS Pandas, and this is where I expect to see some action from some of our young guns. Get flood in there, am I right? The idea here in this one is we get a cushion of course but once we get that lead we'll start auditioning for now we're just gonna roll with the starters see if they can prove a thing or two for us i'm telling you siante has got to get his game together or i'm going to the depth chart like i can't bear to stand to see this man airball him especially against the pandas but that was fit into the window exactly where it needed to go now i'm gonna just take a read option here up the middle fumbles it He's not that strong. You're not built like Iron Man. For teams in the FCS like the Pandas, it's super hard to build a dynasty down there as guys keep transferring out. On a side note, can you imagine how cracked it would be to have FCS Dynasty rebuilds? I have a couple on my channel, but I'm talking about like an actual feature in College Football 26. Would love to see that, just like I would love to see Sihante step it up and not throw a boneheaded ball. I'm gonna have our quarterback here finish out the first half and I'm gonna go to the bench because I'm not happy with this performance. There we go, we got a wide open tight end. Good find to Dykes here. Stepping back up, just gonna send this one across the field into Dykes' hands once more. Big touchdown. I think he's got both of them so far. 88, throw up the X. I was a little hard on Siante this game. He did pretty good, I'll give him that. He stepped up, found the right guys at the right time and scored. Just doing as he should against an FCS opponent. But the third quarter is now for me to see if Emmanuel Pepper can take back the job. And on his first drive in, he's doing a good job getting down the field, gets to throw up a bomb. And that was a bit inaccurate. Let's hope that was just a fluke because if Emmanuel Pepper's auditioning for the quarterback job, he's not doing a good job. I'll let him finish out this drive, but honestly not enough to see here to go ahead and give him the job over Siante even though he found Smythe right there for the touchdown. This is what I'm really looking forward to. There is a new sheriff in town and he's got 95 speed. Look at him just shed the first guy and just take off. Jets all the way into the red zone. Looking to also show off the cannon that he has brought with him. There it is, 95 throw power and in. I guess he was short one yard, but no big deal. RPO into his hands. Gave him a good opportunity, but we'll just let Kiero finish it for the touchdown. That was electric from Flood's first drive. Let's let him do it again at 95 speed and a great run. If it wasn't obvious already, I think I'm excited about all the possibilities here. Great throw. He keeps playing like this. I'm gonna have to find out what it would be like if we just start Started him every game. Two drives, back to the one both times. And that's perfect for number one. Sidearm, Mahomes-like throw, touchdown. I think I can say this kid could be special. Again, I said it for Sihante. It's an FCS opponent, but I am liking what I'm seeing. I have Ben Gallimore on the sideline ready to go in, but I just gotta see one more time here from Flood. As they say, third time's a charm. I wanna make sure I'm getting a fair evaluation on this guy. And he's giving his guys a chance to catch it. I mean, just zipping it into a window. A look at this. Only thing selling him right now now are the receivers not floods fall at all on these last couple plays and he's gonna find a wide open dykes hopefully a driver two falls into ben gallimore's hands because right now it's flood show we're just living in it practically a perfect audition from sheriff flood ben gallimore is now in the game and he's got a similar skill set good speed good throw power it's a couple notches down but there's nothing to be ashamed of with 92 throw power and 92 speed coming out of high school this has been a really entertaining audition all our quarterbacks look super good. I'm gonna come out and say it. Siante, our starter, actually looked the worst. Pepper was up there too. Gallimore only got one drive, but with six seconds left, he wants to just take a shot and see if he can make a connection with Smythe. Didn't happen, but that's okay, I suppose. 63-20, enough was said. Player of the game goes to Emmanuel Dykes in his senior season, four touchdowns, 200 yards. What an absurd stat line when you can have four quarterbacks throw a touchdown pass in a game. Flood actually had the lowest completion percentage, but what made him feel really electric was the 48 rushing yards and touchdown. Despite how well we did, I feel like no receiver made a 
case for why they should be the number one target, not including tight ends like Dykes. You know a new leaf is turning when you're putting up 63 points, but you also know when a deal breaker playing time here for Broderick, a five-star linebacker, we're just not good enough for him. He wants a place where he can actually play. Checking out our board, Robert Truman, number one player in the nation. He is still very much interested in us. Let's get him on a visit against Oregon State ASAP family visit, proximity to home A+. Plus. Sorting by national rank, the number two player in the nation, we're also making some ground on. Really need to hone in on these four-star gems that are already in the top three and about to close. So if I can find a way to muster up some extra points for visits, that's the move. New urgent mission right here, Trent Costello. We need to get points to get him on a visit so we can somehow get ahead of Ohio State. In fact, we know his interest, so let's hard sell him to grassroots. And I don't want to do this for long, but I think I can vulture 10 points from Lee, and that should be good enough to get him on a visit. But the downside is Oregon State's locked for some reason, and I think Memphis might be too late. We'll do it anyway. Wish us luck. In this transition year for the Big 12, I believe we only play like four Big 12 opponents, so it's a unique season where we get to see a bunch of other random opponents. I hear this will not be the case in the next season. Holy Toledo, we got some football on deck here. They're going to go on third and five here with the read option. QB keeper, that worked out well. And it's another situation here where the defense just needs to tighten up on the quick pass. Another first down. Fighting hard for these points, it's a play action it looks all covered up no chance that was gonna work out great job by the defense to bend but not break our turn to respond let's go ahead and hit the read option here get destroyed somehow up to six in the nation already feels like we got some things to iron out but i'm not gonna complain with the ranking one of those things i need to iron out is the quarterback siante's leaving a lot for me to desire out here at the position in the way it felt to play with a couple of our new freshmen it was an exciting game last week i'll give it up to lock it though that's a good touchdown bringing in a blitz here third and five down goes toledo's quarterback huge sack give us that ball right on back downside of kiro here he's not a good power back for the goal line situations he's your classic safety valve so that's exactly what we do he hangs on for the touchdown first and 10 here looks like Lockett's gonna get outside get a step on his man and make the play big time play right there and let's go ahead and make another one split in the defense Smythe got laid out and intercepted now losing in the third quarter i let pepper get a chance see if he can make the most of it gonna lob one up to the tight end he's got him what a connection we're leading again it really was not that long ago when pepper was a household name here everyone was throwing a little extra pepper on their potatoes for the heck of it such an impact on the brand and a true sign of the tide turning for this team just not sure what's happening here as he gets to his upperclassmen years game on the line here third and 12 it's a toss play i don't know what they were thinking they're stopped short fourth and eight here we go making the play he caught it no right through the db how did he get that what kind of coverage was that and that's right the torch keeps getting passed down the quarterback line again for the second straight re week this time we're looking for someone to win us the game rather than just get reps sheriff flood welcome to the big stage your first game against a non-fcs opponent let's see what you're made of with two minutes to go we'll step up in the pocket there he gets away he has got a knack for doing this huge run great sense of the pocket there knew it was collapsing and had to get rid of the football second and three a little play action letting something develop here going to the corner to lock it just out of reach let's show him why there is a new sheriff in town delivering to Smythe, and he's out of there taking off and fighting all the way down to the two flood is determined to make his mark wanting to win a ball game dumps it to the safety valve no nonsense drive down the field gives it right back to the defense to respond and we're letting them keep their dreams alive and even worse not just letting their dreams stay alive giving them actual hope that they have a chance out here so we're back to the sheriff flood show huge connection still have all three timeouts but opting to just go with the hurry up here look at that step i see something developing it's hit it's Oliveira to the house touchdown Cuna Kings on top once again where we belong. My goodness, what an electric couple drives to keep the team alive. Fans know they got something special growing right here under their nose in Cuna, Idaho. Who knew this game against Toledo would become one of our exciting ones? You never should write anyone out, but I'm not going to lie. That's exactly what I did. Let's continue to bake Davis our freshest plate of potatoes, bring in some more heat, and that is going to be no man's land. Sending the secondary back, but by all means, bringing in the house. Here comes a blitz on fourth and 21. He's forced to throw it out, and that's game. Old McDonald knew that was clutch. 35-31 
heck of a performance here from Flood. There just might be a new sheriff in town. Old McDonald has seen enough. He's going to go with true freshman Sheriff Flood for the next game. First time I've seen this post game, I have a black screen. So I hope that game counted because I'm going to have to hard reboot. And no, are you kidding me? It did not save. So we're going to sim this one. Well, as we sim it here, it looks like we're going to be able to hold in against the Toledo Rockets. A two minute drill. Toledo does score looking for the onside kick. They don't get it. And that's going to be game 28, 25. Definitely nowhere near as impressive as the last one. So that one's going to live in our hearts and minds because old McDonald does not forget. He's still rocking with flood in this next one as promised. Before we get into that next one, I think it's only fitting we go ahead and change some of our recruiting tactics. So let's hard sell everywhere that we can. And of course, where it makes sense. Like Tam over here, I don't think I'm gonna hard sell with a D and D plus grade. We can guess on other hard sells by just deducing it down to what he's already interested in. I feel like guys like Trevor are in the bag, three B pluses across the board, and we got a solid cushion. Britain Butts got even better grades, wow. Lee wants to be a football influencer, we got him. Just like we can guarantee Orlando is Sunday bound. Tavares Condren also has big dreams of plan on Sunday. So you come to CUNA and we get you right. Now I can sort by recruiting stage and identify the guys that need a visit that we're battling it out on here, just like Orlando. Putting a lot of stake on this Oregon State game. Next best thing, have them visit during Memphis week. In other breaking news that might surprise the rest of the nation, Old McDonald is going with a one two true freshman punch at quarterback. Siante got demoted to third string and Pepper's now going to take a red shirt season. Just in time for game of the the week it's the biggest stage for the young dude if he can knock off number nine smu we would know this team is championship bound in just a matter of time first look at flood on the road his first opportunity to prove why this is his team going forward backwards is not ideal i must admit but let's give him a chance to gather his composure step up on third and 15 and hit Smythe for the first down this quarterback can be generational i'm telling you this is post patch even so there aren't many athletes like this two completions and we're already all the way down here what else does he have up his sleeve pressure he can elude it and i think his next act is the vanishing act you never want to flood a crop of potatoes but in this case you want to shower them flood them drench them in love just like Sheriff can. Heck, soggy potatoes can still be baked, mashed, put into a good stew, whatever you prefer. He's gonna need to spring into action here on third and goal. Dart across the middle. Ouch, that's a hospital pass. Dynamic with the arm and the legs. We're going for it fourth down. Heck yeah, scrambling out to the right. Gonna survey, lob one up. That was so smooth. Just does something to old McDonald, I'm telling you. We'll keep it PG and just say he's a giddy coach right now. Following drive here, we got a step from all vera this is a dynamic tandem developing freshman to sophomore that's love right there up 21 to 10 here before half times over we're gonna pad it on 28 10 going into the half as advertised i'm not going back blood is bona fide certified quarterback of the future are you out of your mind a dime to Kiero. smu getting hit like a train already up 25 but you know what that's not enough his first real mistake i'm not gonna lie that one was picked off with some mean intention there. Looking to keep their game alive. This is the fourth down that matters most. Coleman, you aren't getting it past him. And let's see if the big man can rumble. Going to go with the ground and pound red zone carry here from the quarterback first and goal. QB power seems like a good time to go for it. Did not pan out. No big deal. Three more points. Last gasp effort here from SMU. They're going to get denied. Huge sack. Second team All-American Danny Berger on the play. And now we can celebrate 38 to 10. First collegiate start for Flood. An overwhelming success. What a sensation. Pen to paper. It's time to start bringing in the newest batch of potatoes. Trevor's the first one, but I have a feeling there's more to come. I just noticed something that would be iconic. Flood on offense. Jake Storm on defense. Yes, please. Think about it like this. The defense continues to shut down and storm. And what comes with a lot of storm? rain and what comes with a lot of rain 
Flood. Sheriff Flood. Got some extra points, so I'm just gonna hand it out to the guys we're already pursuing, just to remind them we're here. And well, just in case the heart pitch is not enough. Some really solid teams in the Big 12. Baylor's fifth in the nation. Colorado's unranked, but four and one. We're number two, four and zero, oh, and a lot of three win teams. We have a lot riding on this game against Oregon State. So many visits. The last thing we're gonna do is drop it on our home turf. We finally have so many hard working farmers out to visit us, taking time away from their busy schedule. Sheriff, oh, you just can't be stopped, can you? If you're feeling like a cheat code in your true freshman season, how are you gonna act up when you're a senior? You're probably NFL bound in just a year or two, to be honest. Taking control of Danny Berger, this guy has been a lot of fun, but what's not fun is blowing an assignment in the secondary. We got ourselves a ball game. Around and around we go. Let the games begin. Kiro strikes back. A chance to pad the score. So when we get opportunities like this, let's take it. Jet touch pass to Smythe. Didn't work out. Fourth down, no biggie. Let's go ahead and convert. Looking for anyone. We'll just dump it out to lock it. How did he actually come back for that? That is all my mistake for throwing that one into danger. The coverage looked like he backed off. We're back, we're cold after throwing that costly interception, but we'll step into this one, let lock it, get some speed down the field. All tied up, it's our time to shine. And yep, we got a big tight end target, wide open, it's Dykes rumbling his way past the 30. Nothing like a big connection to shake off the cold over the middle, lock it, secured it. Oh no, he did not. So we're gonna have to go take this underneath the Kiro work our way forward. And then on third and six, looking, scanning, Smythe. And then on fourth down, let's see if we can make some magic happen. Stepping up into the pocket, the one guy that got beat. Our block could not hold against 97 Trufant. The one angle we took was the wrong choice. Back and forth, this one is gone. No one's really running away with it. So why the heck not now? Let's go ahead and run away with this thing. Touchdown to lock it dime not related to tyler lockett sterling lockett actually is and he played for kansas state that puts a lot of pressure on the beaver offense here forced to go for it on fourth down no good they gambled and it failed and their failure leads to our success touchdown sheriff 12 point cushion here with two minutes to go if it wasn't over it's over now those pesky beavers would not back down 14 points mustered up in the fourth quarter for a 45 37 finale on that note bring them out bring them out bring them out robert truman number one player in the nation out of new york says deuces to the east coast packs his bags goes all the way west coming with him out of kansas well familiar with the farm life it's Orlando Liggins. Doesn't just like to eat his potatoes, he Liggins all up in them. Tavares Condren, so glad you can join us. Britain butt likes the butt end of potato skin. Little odd if you ask me, but hey, we're all about it as potato kings. We had Liggins ligging his potatoes. Now we have Suggs who likes to sug, mash potatoes up like a vacuum. Heck of a performance. Hats off to Antoine Lockett, the freshman. Seven catches, 193 and three. Got our team headed in the right direction, that's for sure. Just like we're headed in the right direction here with Tam, Oklahoma State already pulled out all the tricks their visits done our visits now secretly hoping we can keep inching forward on broderick even though i can't put any points to him looks like byron denson's about to commit and he's a walmart share of flood no disrespect to him he's got a great skill set 91 speed 96 excel 93 throw power and i'll happily take him here he's just got competition in front of him with even faster speed and stronger arm with additional points looks like i was hanging around on a five-star bust so heck i'll go ahead and still pursue him because looking at these stats there's no way he's a bad player we got Eagly, the freshman running back we haven't even had a chance to see, but it still excites me to land some really good ones behind him as well. That's one thing old McDonald has gotten right since the start. He has a knack for finding running back talent, but hold the friggin' phone. Romeo Talton, 99 speed gem receiver. I swear I said earlier that receiver was our biggest need, and I've seen enough. Sign me up. That's actually so iconic, so much so that I'm gonna steal points away from a four-star running back and go ahead and get me some extra points from Lee because I'm scheduling this man on a video visit ASAP championship contender bingo you're in Memphis Tigers are on deck and if them Tigers misbehave we're gonna force feed them potatoes because again no one walks in here and gets out alive that's for sure I know that's like a gator saying too but I mean it that's also a potato saying flood making magic happen early in this one good night man i just can't wait to attach him with a 99 speed receiver that'll be there for at least the next three years of his career red zone on our opening drive here play action surveying big sack this memphis group looks like they have an impressive defense solid secondary there are guys out here 
that look like they can stop our receivers, mainly from what I saw in the matchup window. But I'm sure as the game goes on and we begin to wear and tear this group, we could have our luck. Have you ever known old McDonald to be one to settle for the three? Maybe he should more often because that did not work. Memphis got a little pep in their step now. Just got done talking about why he should kick field goals. Yet he calls for another go for it here on fourth down. It works out. Maybe just when we're closer to the red zone. Their defense is swarming early, but clearly leaving Dykes open is a mistake. Gonna audible for a QB keeper. That's exactly what he does. Up the middle and down to the four. Love to see the leadership out of the young buck. Just gonna scramble, take off, find a wide open smite. We're on the board. What can he do for an encore? For starters, we'll hit Dykes. And then on third and inches, let's run a play action. They really bit that. We step into it, Kane. So nice, we gotta run it twice. Scrambling out to his right. Gonna step into a big bomb here to lock it. Can only get away with it so many times. We can get away with a monster bomb here on this case. Talk about flipping the field here with just 10 seconds left in the quarter. He's got that Platinum Magician ability. It's over, man. Just showboating on him. Your eyes do not deceive you. Gallimore's in the game. Looks like our man Flood had to step out via injury and yeah, he's back. Old McDonald has been telling his guys to always stay ready especially at the quarterback position. In this day and age, you never know what can happen and you always need to be ready to pinch. Maybe Floyd gets big for his bridges, wants to hit the portal for more money, but I doubt it because we're one of the best teams in the nation, so you don't really get better play anywhere else. What I'm yapping about is two quarterbacks, maybe three. You need to have good ones and plenty of depth. It's an absolute flood of points as this frenzy will continue calling the flood drive. It's just a match made in heaven blood drives for flood oh man this sheriff you can make nicknames off his first and last third and 14 let's let our big man go up for it dykes toe drag no good taking the field goal to go up by three whole touchdowns pressing them back on their heels they're in panic mode just forcing a wobbler deflected there at the defensive line we have a physical bunch and Knox did the rest another game another victory for old McDonald the haters are awfully quiet right now critics have nothing to say just has a knack for winning and he's getting it done you know the dynasty is getting insane when Heisman mode feels like varsity and we're landing five stars out the wazoo oh no this is no good why is Iowa State picking up the pace now on Romeo Wisconsin too right behind Central Michigan's up to an 80 over all, but I still think we can make opponents like this a quick out. I think there's a flash flood warning in the area. If you're in central Michigan, make sure you find some high ground because it's about to go down. The only thing that went down to start off this game was our defense giving up three points and now we're under immense pressure fighting to stay alive. Wow, absolute pressure fest. We felt so out of control there. Moral of the story, you never count anyone out. Down 10-0, we're gonna have to go out swinging in this one. We do have a open Kiero the safety valve got some wheels always boggles my mind when linebackers go one-on-one -on -one with them fourth down we're past midfield this is a crucial turning point we're just gonna keep it with flood and pick it up very next play we're gonna launch one to alvera he got hit while throwing it and oh man you could have completed a sick highlight do better to bail out your boy i'm telling you man don't let him hang out there on an island smythe will show you how it's done buddy up 14 zip now this is the team i know haven't really called for any all goes because i'm worried no one will be able to burn any corner out here so let's go ahead and test that theory oh baby alvera said oh yeah coach mcdonald you said help a buddy out how about this one how about this one back against the wall here jet counter he's got a hole and he's got a lane good run blood right now could be a all-star running back if he really wanted to but at heart he is a quarterback it's absolutely oh my gosh that's bad that's bad that's when scrambling gets a little out of control lock that one in the memory bank let's not get a little too silly out there if you know what i mean Instead, just take your surefire plays to lock it. Deep bomb, 95 yards and six. Not giving my kicker much love in this series. Let's go ahead and hit a 50 yard bomb here and get him a clip that he won't forget. Noodle leg, that's why I stay off. Atwell, that's why you're not getting clips, man. No more trolling, man. Let's just pick it up with lock it. Freshman to freshman crime. Bringing in the big boy package here. We got a couple tight ends out here. 
offensive line just melted down and oh my goodness that would have been sensational i've used that word more times than i can count but there's no other way to describe the gameplay of this quarterback i'm telling you man out to his left he's got some space in front of him that's what he does scrambles it in he's like that and so is our defense man we're built different tip deflection beard silencing all the fans and the haters looks like they're asking for more here another fourth down conversion attempt denied cross central michigan off your list we're done here i can tell you that much 44 18 on to the next player of the game guess who lee welcome to the cause and a very warm and buttery baked potato welcome for ramon tam five star gem pieces are coming together in a position here where we got most of the guys we really wanted now we can dilly dally and just pursue some of the other open guys a storm is brewing and the forecast calls for a lot of rain emmanuel estrella can't say much about your name but i'm glad to have you on the team beat up boise state let's go so so thankful we are able to run away here with romeo talton and get ready next year for this unit to get even better running all the way to the end zone he's even built like tyreek hill another late board find here in zari brown four-star gem receiver 95 speed 90 spec catch not to mention he's a cool six foot five out of brentwood tennessee super happy with how things are progressing and look at this an old reunion against a mountain west foe traveling in to new mexico for this last non-conference matchup i know it's been a little unorthodox i can't make the rules it's just some weird big 12 transition rule, right? Next year should be back to the typical amount of conference matchups. However, I'd say for non-conference matchups, we had a mixture of opponents just like this, New Mexico style, low overall. But then we also had some top ranked opponents like Smew. Check this out. It's starting to rain. And I think that spells bad news for the Lobos. Their fans should be safe up in the stands because this field's about to get flooded by a flurry of offense. As we continue to bake them up, mash them up, and boil those suckers, I'm curious to hear what your favorite catchphrase is. Or heck, create me a new one and comment it down below and it might just get featured. Regardless, back to the action here, somehow letting the Lobos into this game not sure why we're taking a breather against this team but it would be in our best interest and college football playoff interest if we keep the pedal to the metal see he gets it and he hits the gritty to show how much he gets it lobo's pressing up even though it's a rain game that's not going to stop me from taking a couple shots because it works out even against a platinum badge activation there corners got caught up and now we have another chance to go ahead and get some more points before the half's over. Third and seven, just gonna dump it over the middle into Kiero's lap. He's got it, touchdown, starting to pour it on. I guess we just needed a second to warm up because this thing is getting out of reach. Not impressed right here by the Lobos one bit they're even acting like a fool hurting our quarterback so let's go ahead and punish them for their mistake you do not get away with that all right i get it it's about time we show some mercy out here after this last emphasis point this is why the lobos are still in the mountain west and why we are now in the big 12 this team beard on defense is a juggernaut bus is all warmed up new mexico to idaho that is a long journey up the northern chute but safe travels for this group we had a lot of fun here this one right here deserves celebration the rich just keep getting richer man could not resist our golden potatoes it's about time we see a big 12 opponent west virginia is headed to idaho for a little spud showdown welcoming in the big 12 era with open arms and rain a lot and lot of rain kavka on the board first let's have some fun here in the old big 12 unless that quarterback's number 24 i think this is the wildcat nope i'm wrong that is a quarterback number 24 dotting us up to number one okay must have been an athlete converted over here and he looks good at quarterback in for a fight i can tell down by a touchdown we're just gonna step up and run around the defense it didn't amount to much so the quarterback here number 24 is gonna step up and try to lead his team into the end zone stopped really glad we can deny him from the end zone holding him to three is a win in this case as of right this second looks like no one is on Smythe, so that is a blown coverage assignment and that's going to be picked on all day long so they better figure it out 
because we'll gladly take six. Got down the field here, called a timeout with one second left. They're going to take their three and get it. Down by two touchdowns. I don't want to hit the panic button yet, but this is a performance we haven't seen. Not sure what's gotten into West Virginia, but they look good and they're playing inspired football. We'll look to continue to crack the code here one play at a time. Olvera, get through, big man first and goal. Could be a little bit of Big 12 jitters. I don't know. I do know this is not characteristic. Blood is usually much more on point. Thankfully, he's still got a quarter left here of football and a strike to Dykes to turn the tide. And what do you know? He's rising up to the occasion. Read option, hitting the outside and finishing it off. Tie ball game. Put that thing in turbo. Let's go. Potato Kings are coming alive out here. Farmers unite. Oh no, I don't know what I just did. I didn't even realize he was open. <laughs> Flood even makes messing up look good. Locking this man in with the franchise contract, 100%. He wants a million NIL dollars. That's toilet paper for old McDonald. He'll happily fork it over to keep this guy in town. He's such an improviser. Touchdown. Quite literally stormed back into this one. Really impressive to see this performance out of the team except no eagerness there or aggression from the receiver. Guess he didn't want it. Forced to resort to this. We've done a stellar job in the second half, just shutting him down, blanketing everything. Burger with the dagger. Number 24 from West Virginia looked really good until he was humbled by this defense. Putting the ball in number one's hands here, trying to finish this one off. The wear and tear panel just shows me that he's getting beat up and his arm is like a noodle. So a 47 yard kick, is that in his wheelhouse here? Let's find out. Good accuracy, a little wobbly there. Oh my goodness, it's so sensitive even weeks after playing this game. I could have sworn Berger had the dagger there until I guess we fumbled. They're all out of timeout, so this is actually the game right here. Everything on the line. Mr. Bloom on that one. Okay, good stop on the other side of the cornerback's room. Good job they're defending it down by Berger's counterpart. In an impressive second half comeback, we win. Add one more five star to the list. Couple more four stars to compliment. There literally isn't anyone we haven't really been able to get. Trust me, it's the whole Ariana Grande. I see it. I want it. I got it. I'm not sweating over anyone on my board. I just don't know who else to go scout. I wish there were more or open four stars because three stars for most of our positions at this point are useless. Little gem here, little gem there actually might help. So that's maybe our only route forward. We can worry about that later for now. It's Iowa State. Farm heavy Iowa meet CUNA Idaho. Wearing the all black alternates in this one, I don't think that's gonna help them even as drippy as they look. Got risky showboating it there on offense, but I think we're just a confident group all around. With confidence comes comfort, knowing that your team's always got your back and you can take chances. Coleman, come on, man. What a play. Confidence, this is what we talked about. Fourth down, we're going for it. It's trust. And unfortunately, it doesn't always go our way. But sometimes, just sometimes, it all works out in the end. What a burst here, just taking off. Setting us up here with a fresh set of downs, square into opponent territory, Smythe touchdown. Iowa State responds, but you know what? Two can play that game. We will also go ahead and dial up our response. Third and goal, stepping up to the left. Oh man, that guy is fast. We somehow get out of it. Just throw it away. Another fourth down. Some have paid off. Some have not. What will this be? Breaking one tackle. Couldn't get the pass off. This thing is getting close for no good darn reason. Iowa State's defense all of a sudden deciding to step it up. Getting some good stops. I think my next course of action here then is to just throw up a bomb and hope our big man can come down with it. Yes, Alvera outside and in to the end zone. What a job. Needing every last point in this one as Iowa State is going back and forth. Toe for toe, blow for blow. Bringing in a blitz, looking to stop this run play. Oh, he got the edge and he got the pickup. It's in defense's hands here to finish off the game. Fourth down, another interception. This time it's Knox. What a play. For as good as the defense has been at times, it's a surprise to me that they've put up 39 points. Thankfully, that was their last time out, so we can try to end this thing. Worst case scenario, we don't pick it up, but best case scenario, we do. Oh man, you know I'm a sucker for a gamble. Instead of a jet touch, I audible it to halfback stretch, doing the team a service, chewing the clock all the way down, then handing it up 
He's got it. Victory formation, game over. Another close win here against an Iowa State team that stormed back in it. Chip Coleman walks out of there with National Defensive Player of the Week honors. And don't look away now. This team is red hot 10 and 0. No players on the Heisman watch list, probably because we were messing around with the quarterback carousel the first three weeks. We'll get on there one day, but for now, we're atop the Big 12 with BYU. And even better yet, as it stands right now, we're into the college football playoffs. And if we go undefeated, I don't know why they would give us the long route. Again, those are all future concerns. We have to focus on the present, and that is the Baylor Bears. We're walking into their home, hostile territory, and you know what they say about bears. They got big appetites. So if we're not careful, I don't want to see them mash up all our potatoes and eat us. Got to stay on our A game, folks. Haven't engaged in much tomfoolery, so let's go ahead and try it out. Maybe it'll work. Just maybe. And that's why I don't engage in much tomfoolery. Intercepted. Game just started and Baylor's looking at a favorable red zone position. Starting behind the eight ball, that's okay. We can go ahead and get some of it back right here on this drive and have Kiero bust his way through. Looking for some much needed points here as the second quarter winds down. Let's go ahead and lob one up to the big fella. End zone, touchdown, tie ball game. Baylor offense on the attack in a major way. We're going to hold them the four. Low scoring affair, honestly surprising out of two Big 12 teams. It's just not characteristic. So let's go ahead and change that here on this next one. Looking like a Johnny Manziel surveying is anything open whatsoever. I sometimes entertain those plays because I'm hoping something falls in our lap. If it does, it makes for an insane clip. Usually it's just a bunch of running around with our head cut off. This time... We do cash in. Cash us in, cash out, cha-ching. Methodical drive turning into third and goals. Got a receiver in motion. Stepping into this, fourth and goal. Back at the two. It's a handoff to 17, and he got it. And now, unfortunately, we're behind. Got to go play some catch up, so that's exactly what we'll do. What a delivery while getting hit. Past midfield on the last one, and across the middle is open to Dykes. Quick response is what was needed, and a quick response is what they will get. We're back on top. Oh man, fourth and 17, giving cushion. I'd like to see them wiggle their way out of this one. Yeah, not gonna happen, buddy. They're blown off opportunity could turn into points for us and let's just say i'm hungry for more than three touchdown would seal this thing and there it is there is a new sheriff in town before i say anything else i got to go ahead and get the first down and ah, sigh of relief I can now talk all I want. Baylor out here trying to make things interesting, so I have to finish the job and do it the right way. Crucial, crucial third and five here on the QB power. He's just short. Coach McDonald and I are on the same page. Flood wants it bad, so he's going to keep it and finish it off. Wow. And to reward his resilience, victory formation. That kneel down just feels so good. 28-25 with one game left in the regular season. I guess you can find a diamond in the rough every now and then. Three-star Rico Biggers, 92 speed DB. Let's bring him in. His friend Tommy Murphy over here, also a good one. Kerry Forrester stepped up in a big way against Baylor. So good, in fact. National Defensive Player of the Week in back-to-back -back weeks, I believe. I guess Nebraska and Cincinnati could also sense Biggers was on to big things here. With so many excess points, we're literally just spending our days scouting out more and more players. Calvin Harver, Maurice Klutz, Connor Hawley, do you want to be the next? Nope, you want to be the next one off my board. Final game of the season against Arizona on the road. We could keep a 12-0 record intact. That's insane. I knew we had a good team, but shoot, it felt like on paper and it felt like on the field, this was actually a step back. The defense, definitely a step up, but offense, step back. I'm not going to be deceived by Arizona's four-win record this year because they're actually a good team as well on paper around the 85 overall range was it no chance these cats will bear down on me and i'll start off the game with a strike to Kiero. little showboat little dance touchdown team is cooking on all cylinders 24-3 here this has been silly and holy cow their sirens blaring they're trying all they can to stop us on third and five i hate to break it to them it ain't gonna work. The last thing Arizona wants to see is 31-3 at the start of the fourth quarter, but I think that's exactly what we treat them to. In style here, going with a QB power counter, wide open, walking it in. Just really isn't much to say from this game. I mean, it's a huge fourth down conversion. They managed to get it, but at what cost? I don't think anyone's afraid of that. Score points, oh well. 
we can score points too. Just the level of dominance we have right now on this CUNA team. Check that one off the list. 34-10, Arizona did not show up in their home finale. Four and seven, they go. Tack a couple more four stars onto the list. We were hoping to land these guys, especially excited about Zari Brown. Only question I have is how are we ranked third in the nation? We fell a spot? Before I can inquire further, I need to take care of business against number nine, Texas Tech in the big 12 championship game. All right, fine, that can wait a second. Curiosity got the better of me. Clemson and Ohio State ranked higher than us, even though they have two losses. Let's see if anything changes from the coaches poll. Hey, we're number two on this one as Ohio State catapults into number one after a big 34-10 win over Michigan. Media also has us at three. I guess I get it with our non-conference schedule. For the sake of keeping a favorable playoff position, we need to win this game. And well, yeah, it's always cool when you can hoist up the conference championship trophy. So that's equally important for these fans. They want to call their school a champion of the Big 12. Let's go smoke on that Raider pack here. Spin and fumble. It's on the ground. Way to recover. Jeez, that got interesting and instantly made flood cold. Gonna need him to warm up here. So a little touchdown or at least first down conversion will do. Gotta be careful against the Red Raiders. They have a solid defense and usually a good offense too. Look who's in, Le'Veon Eagles. I haven't seen him all year. So let's go ahead and hand it off to him. Pat Gall. That one's on me, but at least we can see what the generational six star running back is up to in today's day and age. Came out here for a cup of coffee, got lit up, and that was all in his day of work. Fourth down to number four, touchdown. Holding Texas Tech to three right now. Let's just go to Kiero. Didn't get any ground. But what we do have here is a first and goal at the one yard line. That pressure came in extremely hot. Froze on the last one, but let's just send it up the gut with our power back Kavka blown to smithereens. Shoot, now we're looking at third and goal when we had such a great chance earlier. Fourth and goal, maybe it's an appropriate time for a jet touch pass. Let's test that theory could not get through. Enough horsing around. Let's call a flood concept for flood. It's the perfect idea here on another big fourth down. He can extend this play on his own. He's going to look and wait for it to develop. I didn't understand that that linebacker was going to go back and make a play. Third try is a charm. I can't believe we have yet another opportunity to get some points. Thankfully, Dykes makes it a sure thing when you come to jerry's world you have to bring out the big guns quick strike to the tight end he was open until he was bottled partner you good because i don't know what that was i do know this is a crucial third down let's just lob it up to Kiero, and you see the play it's a flood drive for flood that's the only way i think we can crack the ice here we go and i was right smythe just call his name first and goal at the one can we just make it a simple touch and go wow why is it too hard to plunge? Need a big body, not a receiving back for that. That is honestly the opportune time to get a guy like Kavka in there yet again. Coach McDonald got him in a little later than he should have, in my opinion, because look, we needed all the size to just fit right in. Third and two, Texas Tech not letting us get out of this that easily. Fourth and inches, let's punish them for even thinking they could get through our defense. Massive third down. He's open and I just saw it off the back of our foot there. Last second dump. That catch was clutch. Now we can go ahead and try to run this thing out. Lockett's got 95 speed, so heck, let him get a shot. Not very happy with that result, so back to Kiero. It goes nowhere. At least all their timeouts are chewed up and we have a chance here to get a good three-point addition bingo fourth and four we can go in victory formation if we just make the stop comeback route success had an inkling it was going to come down to this texas tech scores it's a 24 24 ball game only fitting that a champion is crowned here with some extra football yo got way too fancy threw it on the run and now we're in serious and i mean serious danger i didn't know what that route was please be a flag on them i thought that he was gonna go into the middle of the field i might have misread that but i hope that flags against them <laughs> oh thank you just got saved new life new opportunities let's not squander it bruh texas tech just stunned us i thought we had this one in the bag for sure 
in our perfect season is no more. Red Raiders beat us on the last drive too. That's just pain. Moving into the playoffs and off season time of year, Broyles award coordinator goes to Raphael OC at Acuna. Garrett Pitts from Nebraska wins Heisman. Danny Berger wins his second DB of the year award. And it looks like we made the college football playoffs. Unfortunately, no buy since we lost to Tech. Actual pain moment right here. Texas Tech gets the buy in our place because they beat us. It should have been me, not him. Early national signing day, we have the third best class. Five, five stars, 13, four stars. Right on up there with some of the nation's best. Well, shoot, here goes nothing. Round one of the playoffs is gonna run through Cuna, Idaho. That's right, a playoff game out of little old Cuna, Idaho. I can't believe it. The stage is set, the sun is setting behind us. We got playoff football here, folks. Flood is going to look to deliver a ball here instead of running around like a banshee. And as soon as I say that, just takes off for 11. This could be the downfall of our playoff run. Just going for it on fourth down. Reckless abandon out here. And even Tulsa is going to stop us. What are we doing, old McDonald? Tulsa did, in fact, have a Heisman candidate. Quarterback finished third in the race. So we got to keep our eyes peeled. Don't want to get too comfortable out here because Tulsa is just one of them teams that could sneak up on you and take you out when you least expect it. Thankfully, lock it broke free and scores the first touchdown of the game. Fun fact, we're still yet to win a playoff game. We've lost every bowl game and the first round of the playoffs last year. So this would be a feat in itself. Maybe I'm mistaken. I just know we lost the first official titled bowl game in the playoff run last year. So we might have won the play-in game just like we're on pace to do here. Tulsa doing just enough to keep things interesting out here. But let's see if they can hang with the big dog. Yeah, they can. Lock it. Will you carry us home? Yes. Cutting in and out. Good weave. Good spin. Good speed. Going to go back to the big dog. I asked if he could keep up the first time. He couldn't. The second time, he could not. I think I got that backwards. First time, he could. Second time, he could not. The potato fields are not getting plowed tonight. Everyone's busy watching their team take on Tulsa. Nothing like a hard day work, a cold one, and sitting back watching the CUNA Kings play some football out here. Yes, sir. Well, that was a fun aerial angle. Regardless, we're going to go ahead and look for some more points. Fans absolutely eating it up. They're going to be traveling with us because unless something crazy happens, we're already up 41-23. I don't expect this one going to go any other way turnover finishing touches on this one he's wide open just got to get underneath it and we're on to the next round much love to the cuna idaho fans for showing out selling out bringing all the action in this 55 37 victory great day and debut performance in the playoffs for flood now it's the rose bowl we have a chance at revenge michigan knocked us out last year let's get them back michigan's never a pushover but they went 12 and 1 this season that's crazy even in the early 2030s they look to still be winning like they do i don't think we let it slide rose bowl an iconic college football atmosphere that is exactly the atmosphere an iconic team like the potato kings are looking to step their feet into i really mean really want revenge here against michigan which is why i'm counting on flood to have a big performance just like that clutch play the freshman has passed pretty much every test thrown his way big 12 championships not entirely on him that's a team joint effort just like the sport in itself fourth and inches he's gonna keep it quarterback draw stepping up into the pocket sheds on through methodically going down the field read option did not work so i say we spread them back out and hope someone gets through if they're running man to man it could work out which it will underneath overa yes picks it up let's see what we can do now that we're in this position middle tight end post first and goal second and goal wow that just sunk fast they got their dogs on us quick now third and goal the flood is open Smythe finishes it off breaking the zero zero seal in our favor first and if you ever get a chance to go up 14-0 Michigan you gosh darn believe I'm gonna take it corner route he's got it first and one plunging this thing up the gut with Kavka no one picked up any of the DTs trust me that was just bad something broke there in their assignment so we're gonna have to do it ourselves on the QB power touchdown keep it going do not let up lock it looks like he's breaking free just threw it out of his reach could have been six and with Michigan now on the board it's ever so pressing that we get our names back out there flood yes revenge would just be so sweet that is what our eyes are set on we know what we have to do quick dump out here 
Walk the dog. That was easy. Michigan finally found pay dirt. They got a six of their own, but we're going to strike right back to Oliveira with less than a minute in the second quarter. 35 points in the first half. Looking to make it now 40 to 10. The flood machine. It is pouring out here. Michigan can't catch a break, and I have no plans of letting up. Touchdown, Kiro. 42. No lead. Feels safe against Michigan. I'm looking to start the second half just like we finished the first with another touchdown. This is just plain humiliating. I don't know if Michigan's ever lost this bit. I'm treading on thin ice there, talking about winning or losing, and it's only the third quarter. But honestly, this is one of our most dominant performances as a team. Go figure against Michigan in the playoffs too. Absolutely amped about that. Seven easy touchdown passes today. Flood is making it rain. We're up so big that backups are in. Gallimore gets a crack at the playoffs. What a scene for him. Not just for Gallimore. This is great for our whole team. Guys like Spruce wanted to transfer Transfer, but now he's making big plays in the playoff race. Man, funny how things go full circle. Power O to Kavka. He's got a lane and punishes his way through. 63 big ones. Wave them goodbye. Crazy score crazy upset by some critics. No one expected Kuna to get revenge this big. So hold up that Rose Bowl. Let's celebrate. We're one step closer to the natty. Between all of the games taking place, Sheriff Flood got recognized with national honors. And man, we're getting our run of the gauntlet. We have to take on Alabama, but the crazier storyline that could end up happening, albeit they have to get through Notre Dame and we have to get through Alabama, it could be a Big 12 championship rematch. But for this team, we have our eyes set on Alabama in the Cotton Bowl. There it is in all of its glory. We played at this very stadium for the Big 12 championship, so we're familiar with the atmosphere and the layout. This time it's different. It's for a much bigger stake. Rocking it with the gold chrome domes. Let's get it going. And we're gonna have to get it going off on the wrong foot. Alabama was quick to the draw, scoring seven of their own, but playing man coverage, never a good idea when you're taking on the Potato Kings. We just got too many any weapons out there. A look at this star-studded offense for Alabama. Could have made a pick, but a fourth down stop was just as good. They managed to take three points and then somehow get a safety on us. I was not aware of that. Flood is not going to be pressed. He's going to take his time and simply do what a good quarterback does. Give his players plenty of opportunities to make a big play, even when you're dropping obvious ones. That was insane. I can't believe he just dropped that. Let's go ahead and give another good ball for our receiver to play on. He's got it. Third time's a charm. And with the lead by two, we want to pad this thing thing on so let's just outrun one defender and just skirt on past the next it's like the camera angle has no idea we are just going to school the opposition like we do it can't keep up and you know who else can't keep up the DB. Losing to Texas Tech and ruining the perfect season, I think was the kick in the butt this team needed because now we're scorching hot. Took care of Michigan, no problem. Alabama's just next here on the hit list. Third and one, we did have an open receiver. That's crazy. We had a chance and I don't know what's going on here. Probably should have thrown that away. Instead, we'll settle for three, which is better than nothing. Clearly, it would have been better to get more. As you can see, 24-22, Alabama definitely never going to go down without a fight. I'm going to send Senior Dykes here on a streak because I had a feeling something like that was going to happen. I was right. We just couldn't connect. Instead, I'm going to call a flood drive here on fourth and 10. We usually have good luck with these plays and the good luck continues. It's in his name. Fourth and six. Here comes Alabama with another chance at redemption they complete fourth and one man they are working their way down the field and just a bad assignment there spoiler they end up scoring and now it's up to the offense to go ahead and close this game out quick dump off to Smythe. out of bounds is not what we want definitely need to be chewing the clock here instead we're going to run the rpo kane's going to pick it up third and two calling one of the simplest plays in the book it's an inside cross just need someone to step up and there we go dykes you got it can start to chew clock one more first down would officially do it hero taking it to the left looking for some blocks he's got a couple and now on third and six this is the game looking for a first down over the middle he's got it let's go that was nails victory formation it's over it's mind-boggling to see old mcdonald just keep racking up these big games we've been counted out all year long no one expected us to beat michigan or alabama sure they thought we were a good team but really sheriff flood he was on no one's radar quite literally fourth string on our own depth chart 
in week one now look fast forward to the end of the year he is the starter and he is three and oh in college football playoff games you literally can't have a better start to your career because things are just getting brighter for his career national championship game as a true freshman fell short last year unfinished business in this season really have to work for it i'm telling you michigan alabama now notre dame three of some of the biggest programs on this planet we're the david in this david and goliath story small town roots local grown potatoes an old mcdonald that believed it's all amounted to this the 2031 national championship game and we're gonna start off the game with a big ball to the defensive tackle are you kidding what just happened i've never seen an interception quite like that unbelievable what show me that again freshman dt number 99 that should not have happened are you serious i don't appreciate it i do not i'll tell you what little pi there from burger defensive pi uncharacteristic from this team it was mitch bloom not burger like i originally suspected that makes sense from one of the best i don't know how Coleman just got burned. So Notre Dame takes the lead. As a matter of fact, it's not looking so good in our favor. 21-7. Come on, guys. We have fought so hard to get to this point. Getting to the pinnacle and falling flat would just be criminal. I can't bear to think about it under pressure here that has to be pi i mean he was just rubbing him the whole way. Thankfully, we had a little magic go our way. And we're going to step to the left, try to outrun someone on the run. Alvera, that's called keeping a play alive. Scramble drill to perfection. We're not just going to bend over for the Irish here. Fourth down. Out of timeouts, but in the red zone. Points here would be a huge addition. We'll take them any way we can get them. Three points is needed. And now we're within seven. RPO alert out. We have an open man throw to, so I'm just going to hit him off the rip. I saw a DB out of coverage. Got to pick apart mistakes when we see them. Fourth down, conversion. Smythe holds in there. Now fresh set of downs. Back to Smythe. Another flag. There's been a lot of those. Offensive line just holding. Can't get a break right now. Going to need to spend a lot of focus in the offseason training up the big boys. I can already tell. Flood's got enough to get around here. 15 positive yards. Turned something in out of nothing there lock it just lobbing it in touchdown we're all tied up fourth quarter it's scary hour qb power cam newton like he is wearing number one after all nowhere near the same frame but he's got the grit and heart and oh man we're so close we can almost taste it who's covering number two fist pumping at all i can't believe that no one was back there this late in the game this big of stakes how do you let that happen balls back in our hands we control our fate third and three need a miracle here wow i believe the forecast getting a bit rainy and let it be that way because it's when we perform best sheriff had me worried in the first half but i can tell he's here to reestablish his dominance in the second half kiro you just realized you might have lost us the game right count your lucky stars one more chance one timeout punt return insane don't you ever sell a drive like that again it's uncharacteristic so i'll give you a second chance i just don't think you realize how big the stakes are it's the national championship you see the formation flood drive for mr flood it works out more often than not thankfully after one play we're already in field goal range but that ain't gonna cut it for the kings we're going for the win and because i know we're good enough i'm already gonna chew clock i don't want notre dame to have any chances extra after us old mcdonald's gotten over his grudge he trusts kiera once more and let's hope he pays off totally just brain farted there forgot we were on chew clock in the national championship game so uh wish me luck folks wish me luck Oh, fourth goal ain't no way i'm going for it three seconds left i'm just gonna take my field goal on fourth and goal don't think that was the most accurate kick, but it did the job. Pressure is on. It's overtime. Fitting how the champ needs to be crowned with one more extra frame. Need to pull out our best stuff here. Going with the reverse, and he's got the angle. Cutting left. First down. What a nail biter right now. I am not going to lie. Let's extend this play to the right. I think we can go ahead and get in there. Speed. K 
kills, touchdown, we're up. Getting the first blow in overtime. And at least in single overtime, we can kick the extra point. Double OT is where a two point comes in. We got up, now it's up to the defense. And that's a quick play. Offense looking to cruise. What a sack, big play. Second and 18, number 99. Huge second and 18 right here, right now. He's gonna go across and hit number four. Brings us to third and five. We're gonna run a Tampa two. I hope this is the right call. And it is a game clinching interception for the national freaking championship. He just made the play of his life. And on that note, Kuna Kings are national champions. There is so much to soak in right now. For starters, I just can't believe that a true freshman went the distance. And then the game ceiling interception, back and forth brawl between Notre Dame, insane games against Michigan, Alabama, Old McDonald, be proud, man. You got some mighty fine gold potatoes and you've done a heck of a job with this program. I just can't believe it ended like that. It's so beautiful, it brings a tear to my eye. This was the first First team builder in college football 25 this series is not done yet we're coming back with some more apps 380 yards three touchdown passes from flood while rushing in another two nick olvera played hero at receiver and on defense we had key contributions across the board here's a storyline for you stephen johnson the man had two picks and the game winner He's a redshirt senior, 80 overall out of American Fork, Utah, a depth player, just became one of the most well-known college football players out there. I love a good story. Number one on top of the world, prestige up some more. And what did I say? Steven Johnson still getting his flowers from that national championship game. 52 touchdown passes, 4,800 yards. This sheriff's the real deal. 15 rushing touchdowns too. Oh my goodness. It's criminal that a true freshman can feed his team this good. Clearly a team of destiny. Star studded on offense in lockdown on defense once again steven johnson's only two interceptions coming in the national championship game this has got to be the most baffling part freddie spruce wants to transfer he got his national championship ring but cares more about playing time so respect to him we'll let him go i'm not even gonna persuade him or wait what am i smoking dykes and kane just graduated so i think there's an open spot for you buddy please come on back the job's essentially yours alex carroll wants to go to the nfl draft we also have a good chance of keeping him that that did not work. That man is Sunday bound. Massive shout out to our guys, Danny Berger, side of fries, the perfect potato king is a first round slam dunk. Kiero getting picked up in the second round showed he's a very capable receiving back. Mitch Bloom complimenting Berger, also very good underrated DB third round pick. Lawrence Hammer, one of the best transfers in the nation out of Utah, wants to be a winner, so he's trying to come to Kuna. That's really the only guy I want to entertain in the transfer portal. Feel really good about everything else. A lot of new archetypes are unlocked locking, which is perfect. I've been stashing skill points for this reason. Ohio State drives a hard bargain, so I need to schedule a visit next week. And it's a very good chance I lose him this next week. Hard sell, everything going his way. Shoot, like Curry, we came through with a buzzer beater. How did we just win hammer over? Life is good over here. Number one signing class. Tacking this on top of a national championship is a cherry on top. A couple seniors at left end, I think Robert Truman, the number one player out of the last year's recruiting class, good fit over there. Taj Godwin looks impressive at a lot of positions, but I think I'm going to go ahead and support him playing middle linebacker because a 94 speed user sounds cracked. Byron Denson could be an 83 receiving back or 78 deep threat, but man has a build like a scrambling quarterback. So I'm going to continue to ensure we have a future there. It's a crowded running back room. So I'm going to throw Baker staff at corner. A couple new freshmen, Le'Veon Eagles and Keglar lead that room and a couple really good looking freshmen in the wings. I thought last year's team was really good. Well, it's getting a whole lot better. 91 overall, 92 offense after training. Craziest part to me is Ben Gallimore really stepping his game up in the offseason. Le'Veon Eagles looking for day one duties. Smythe the only one excelling in the receiver room. Nothing our receivers coming in couldn't fix. And shoot, I'm glad Spruce stayed because he's the best tight end on the roster. Pat Knox was obnoxious for offenses last season. Good to see him take another step. Trayvon Beard's got to be one of the best guys on this defense and he still rocks that crop top. Season is all set up and ready to go for the next episode. But before I send y'all out. Who wants a sneak peek at a couple freshmen? Byron Densing comes in as an impact. Lee Alawali only impact as well. That's kind of disappointing. Romeo, 99 speed and a star. Well deserved. Zare Brown, even better elite development. Couple new tight ends like Estrella. How about elite offense alignment like Suggs or Derek, the star at the other tackle position? It was bound to be this way. The number one high schooler on the board, elite dev. Slap a couple more stars in there. Shoot, and why not the fifth left outside linebacker on the depth chart, elite dev? Ramon Tam, a 
six star, we already knew what we got. And if you're baking it up, mashing it up, soaking it up with your boy King Sponge on this Team Builder Dynasty, hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Until the next one, I got a bunch of other college football 25 bangers on the channel. Go give those a watch.